Swole Benji here. Today's video is showing off Genesis, which is currently the hardest dungeon in New World. It is not the highest level dungeon, that is Lazarus. However, Genesis is much more difficult than Lazarus. Also, I prefer the rewards in Genesis, but I figured I would show you what a Genesis run looks like when you are incredibly undergeared using a melee weapon and using light armor. Yes, that's right. It is the pure torture run. And also, I paid 10,000 coins for this run, which took me five entire days of advertising in the global chats on a 1,400 populated player server to find people to do this. That's how hard it is to do this when you don't have friends, when you don't have a guild, when you don't have a company as they call it in the game, when you don't have a tight-knit, close-knit group of bros to do these kinds of things with. It takes five entire days of paying 10,000 coins to find people to do something like this with you. And let me tell you right now that 10,000 coins is paying 10 times the rate, okay? So basically, I'm offering 10 times the normal amount that other people would be offering just to be able to bring you this video. Anyway, today I'm going to be ranting and talking a lot about how I have run out of things to do in New World. I've run out of things to cover in New World. Basically, as a solo player at this point, I have reached, like, peak capacity of what I can do just playing completely alone. Now, so I can either go out and gather materials all day, right? Which I have done. I have honestly put in... Let, let me tell you about it. From November 22nd, until December 22nd, I have done nothing at all except gather for 12 to 19 hours a day. Now, the reason I did this, there's a few reasons, but one of the reasons that I'm willing to share publicly right now at this moment in time is that the server I was on was completely, utterly dead with a player cap of about 14 players maximum, which pretty much turned it into a single player game. And I knew that merges were coming, so I had prepared greatly by gathering as much stuff as possible so that when merges did happen, I would be able to sell them at a higher price once inflation hit. So gathering 12 to 19 hours a day and stacking it all up into storage, which for those that don't know, you can list a bunch of auctions. What I would do is I would just gather up 1,400 pounds of materials at a time, run to a town, and then list it for three days. And for those three days, I would let the auctions cycle through because no one was buying them on my low pop servers except maybe Star Metal and wood, like weird wood and iron wood for some reason. Those are the big sellers. But, well, also or account them, why not? But, once the auctions ended, they would go back into the storage. So I have almost, I have most storages in the game filled up to the brim with anywhere from 5,000 to 20,000 pounds worth of materials just sitting in storage, just waiting to be sold. I also have all of my crafting up to at least 150, or materials to push it up to 150. Like, furnishing you don't really need at 150, but like, armoring, weaponsmithing, all that stuff. You want it at least 150 so you can craft the tier 5 uh, epics and you can get the perks that you want on your armors. However, one thing that is currently killing the game for me as a solo player with no friends, no guild, no company, right? And for those in the comments that have been saying, oh, j just transfer, just transfer off the server, just move to a different server, I don't have a transfer token. Amazon does not just give transfer tokens out except to their top Twitch streamers for some reason, okay? And I don't stream on Twitch because I hate Twitch, but I don't have a transfer token, I can't leave. You can't buy a transfer token yet, so that's not an option either, and I don't even know if I would pay for one. It's probably gonna be like $40. And even then, I would just transfer to another server that would be filled with weirdo, mentally oddballs that wouldn't enjoy the kinds of fundamentals and the kinds of principles that I enjoy. I have been looking all over the place for a suitable guild, and I don't think suitable guilds play MMORPGs that would, you know, be a good fit for me, so maybe I just shouldn't play MMORPGs anymore. I don't know. Trying to go from 150 like weaponsmithing to 200 is an insanely high cost amount of resources. Yes, if I took those 30 days of farming resources, 12 to 19 hours a day, that's an entire, well, I think it's more than 30 days. It's the 22nd of November to the 22nd of December. So it's more than 30 days. It's like maybe 32, 30, I, I don't know the math. But the point is, is it's like maybe 34, 35. Anyway, the point is that that wouldn't even get close to getting to 200 weaponsmithing if I sold it all and bought the things that I needed. On the server I was on, the, the materials just did not exist. There was not enough orichalcum to even craft that stuff. And you can't just craft a million wooden bows anymore like you used to. They nerfed it, so everyone that got in on that is like, uh, they're grandfathered in, basically. It's like when a new gym opens up nearby and you get a sweet deal on it. 
And uh, even though they still scam you out of it because they see that you're already semi-jacked, so they charge you more than the scrawny nerd or the, the fat ham beasts that uh, go to those places. But the point is, is that uh, Amazon did patch it. They, they made it harder to level this crafting up. So unless you have a guild full of people feeding you materials or you meticulously, uh, you know, scam and subjugate people in the global chat to craft stuff for them all the time for months and months and months on instance the game came out, you're not maxing that stuff out. And even if I did max it out, I would then have to spend hundreds of thousands of coin to make or acquire the trophies and the armor pieces, which are always sold out because everyone wants them and they're being overly charged big time because you have to go as a again as a group as a guild to go kill these boss monsters that have like a two percent chance to drop the armor smithing chest or whatever the heck okay i don't know what drops what i could look it up i don't really care because most of it is group content anyway and oh so a bitch you just just farm just sell all that stuff that you that you farmed up over those those months of 12 to 19 hours a day of playing no dude even if i even if i sold all that and had the 200 smithing right it's still coin flip after coin flip after coin flip constantly, endlessly, forever until you get the perks that you want. And it's just stupid. It's a dumb grind. It's not fun. It's one of the worst grinds ever. I hate MMORPGs where you can't just go into the market and you can buy your top tier stuff um, because it has some ultra mega super rarity like Path of Exile. Like there, there is a belt in that game called the Headhunter. And the thing with the Headhunter is its value continues to increase exponentially to the point where normal people, even people like me that have no job or no life, cannot ever successfully farm for it consistent. Like, if you play 20 hours a day, you play Path of Exile 20 hours a day, and you farmed and farmed and farmed and farmed, and, you, and you're not doing group, like, map content or whatever the heck the streamers do, you will never acquire enough currency to buy that belt in a fresh season. And while the gear grind in New World isn't nearly as bad as that, but... The perks that you need for certain builds in this game are mandatory. Like, if you want to do that rapier build that I've posted on my channel, where you can just sit there and spam flurry on an enemy over and over and over without cooldowns, you need refreshing on basically all your gear. It all needs to be heavy, it all needs to be dex or constitution. You need extremely high gear score to even deal enough damage for the life leech to be worth it. You need life leech on your ring, on your weapon. It gets crazy. It gets, you need the perks for flurry on your armor too, or preferably not your weapon, but it, still, it, it just adds up to way too much coin flips to be worth it. Or like that build I put out where you basically max out your intelligence and you stack burning damage as much as possible using a musket build so when you powder shot someone, they basically burn to death in one shot, which I have encountered someone end of the game that managed to complete that build and yes they one shot people it's insane it's super overpowered and it's been nerfed a few times yeah sure but they managed to complete the build with perfect best in slot gear and they they just shoot people and, and they, they die it's insane it's very powerful so good on them for completing it however for someone like me like it's insane if someone like me can't complete the set without you know it, it, the game basically all the most geared people that are able to complete these sets aren't people that can sit down and play 19 hours a day like me. They are the people that can sit down and manipulate 100 people around them to do work for them, which I insanely hate. I am so against that. That is, a, a, some people might say that's capitalism for you, right? No, that is manipulation. That is virtual greed. That is dogging and putting down your fellow gamer. That is taking advantage of people's innocence. That is awful, and I hate games that do that, and I hate people that do that, and all these guilds, that's all you see anymore. No one cares about friendship, no one cares about building bonds, no one cares about any of that stuff. All they care about is how many random people on the internet they can get to farm for them or give them materials or uh, to uh, collaborate and, and, you know, get their crafting all the way up or whatever, right? So to combat this, I have been putting out, like, budget builds builds that you can go out into the world and, ki and kill a rare monster that respawns every five minutes. You do that for a few hours, you'll get this earring drop or this amulet drop, which will give you all the perks you need. It may not be the highest gear score, you won't have the highest stats on the items or the weapons or whatever, but you will have all the perks that you will need. You will still be a powerhouse in PvP and PvE, and it won't cost you anything except your time. It won't cost you tons of gold or coin flips or luck or RNG or any of that stuff. But you know what Amazon did? They, they they got sick of people like me styling on people that have 600 gear score items. So what they did is they released a patch where the gear score itself on the armor and the weapons 
now is based on the power level. So what, what I mean by that is if you have a if you have like a 525 fire staff and you shoot somebody, uh, you'll deal x, x amount of damage, right? And then if you have a 600 gear score, you'll obviously deal more damage. That's completely fine. But in PvP, if you shoot someone with 600 gear score armor with a 525 weapon, even if you're a glass cannon with all the right perks and all the right stats and all the right places and all the right weapon talents, you're going to deal 1-2% to 2 of their maximum life because your weapon is vastly under gear score expertise, whatever you want to call it, watermark. It's vastly under theirs, so the game calculates it that you are uh, beneath them, you can't, you can barely tickle them. Th this is on a power level scaling if those of you that played World of Warcraft Classic, this is like a glass cannon tier 2 rogue attacking a tier 4 Nax Ramas fully geared warrior tank from the front, okay? That's how, that's how much of a wet noodle we have become, okay? So you can't even possibly play glass cannon low budget gear score builds anymore currently and they probably will never fix this. Uh, it's really ridiculous and stupid. Uh, you will do, you will do better in PvP with a full gray set, no perks, no stats, just gray weapons and armor at gear score 600. Then you will with 525 PvP set. I am I am not joking. I am not kidding. They have nerfed it and messed it up this heckin' bad. It is so stupid. It completely invalidates people like me who don't have massive guilds to just feed them gear and craft them gear and blah 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 blah. Right? And I know a lot of people think that big YouTube. I'm not even really the big YouTuber, but. Uh, big YouTubers, why don't you have a whole you know, conglomerate of friends? Why don't you have a huge massive circle of friends? Generally, people don't want to be friends with YouTubers. They would rather be enemies to them. I, I don't really know why. I guess it's funny or something. But uh, if you like look at my Discord, like no one freaking plays like New World with me at all. Uh, e even the people that play on the same server as me, they have their own little friendship groups, their own little friendship circles. They don't really talk to me. They don't hang out with me. They don't really invite me to things. And uh, even those that followed me on t into the guild that I joined, the Enclave, back back in like what September, early October, right? Uh, those people have already like dropped me. Like they they basically just used me. Uh, and then they just abandon me. They don't talk to me. They don't play with me. Uh, a lot of them even got together in, in, in the Fallout guild because everyone from Enclave quit. So the remaining people that were just picked up from the in-game server or from this channel basically formed their own little clique and discluded me from it. Like, I didn't even do anything to them, right? I didn't do anything bad or mean or gross to them or anything. They just... I don't know why. Uh, maybe they just got sick, like they just grew out of the YouTube f fandom thing or so. I don't really know what the point or where I'm even going with this. So what have we covered so far? We've covered the fact that I have done over a month's worth of just pure gathering and nothing else, and I can almost do nothing with it because inflation has not hit yet. When servers have merged, all these governors with millions and millions of coins in their treasury, they're just sitting on it like a dragon. They are not spinning it. They are not going out and buying materials, but they can. Like, if they want a power level, you know, weapon smithing, they can buy out all the star metal, and they're gonna pay bottom dollar for it. They're just gonna sit on their money and wait, because they, they can do that. And the reason they can do that is because everyone is out trying to, you know, like, undercut each other, but also there are bots. Every, any game with bots, I freaking hate. One of the, th the main things that made me quit World of Warcraft, and for those of you that have been subscribed since the World of Warcraft days, you know this too. The reason I haven't came back and played Season of Mastery, well, besides that I don't have any friends that play a raid and do that kind of stuff anyway, but one of the main reasons is that botting became uncontrollable. It became overwhelming in that game, and nothing was done about it. Blizzard, it would take one guy. You give me a Game Master account, I would log in and fly around the world and ban all the bots. Easy freaking peasy. They are insanely easy to spot. They're all automatic. They're all on rails. They all speak and act and are, have names spelled the same way. It would take one guy, like a 12-hour shift, a little wagey shift, a little simple shift. Here's your $7.50 an hour minimum wage. Get in there, wagey. Ban the bots, right? I mean, you could even pay the wagey $15 an hour. It wouldn't matter how much you pay them. One guy can clean out an entire server in maybe one to two hours. And you just continuously do that. Maybe you hire more than just one guy to do it, right? Hire 20 guys. And you will have your game cleaned up 
Sure, the player counts will drop, the, the gold prices on these RMT sites will rise, good, fine! One of the reasons I don't like playing MMORPGs is because bots, and all of these game companies, they just, they just settle, they're just like, you know what, the players actually like the bot, and I get this too, like, Redditors, you go to Reddit, you talk to these office normie wages that work their dumb office jobs, and then they just make these guilds to uh, harvest worker bees to give them good gear. You know what they have to say about the bots? They like the bots. The bots make things cheaper. The bots mean they don't have to play the game as much anymore so that they can get the farm and all the items that they want at a bargain. These are the guys that would rather work their office job that pays them apparently $40 an hour, okay, to just sit on and do like an hour's worth of work on their computer maybe typing in some graphs or a spreadsheet or something, and then the rest of the time they just browse Reddit, they just upvote and downvote everything that they hate, right? And then they, uh, they, they play their video game, and then they use their real money, and then they buy gold in whatever MMORPG they play, and then everyone else that doesn't do that, all of us that don't make... $40 an hour in real life, that's basically all the third, all, all the, you know, people in lesser fortunate countries, people like me, who can never qualify for a job, like, working my entire life for 13 years, the most I've ever been able to get up to was like $19 an hour, okay? And even YouTube doesn't match that, right? Like, right now I'm making, maybe, like, like, like if you factor it into a wage, I'm making less than minimum wage doing this, guys, okay? Uh, it wasn't quite minimum wage whenever New World first hit, it was actually maybe 1.5 times minimum wage, which in my area, minimum wage is like 725, 750, something like that. So I basically make less than that, <laughs> okay? Um, and I, I'm not even hourly either. That's not how YouTube works. It's not like you can like clock in for eight hours and dick around and get paid. It's, uh, oh, this video got 2,000 views. Okay, so here's, here's like two bucks, dude. Thanks, man. Uh, and sometimes it's like, this video got 10,000 views, and here's here's $4, man. It doesn't make sense. It's whatever ads run on the vids. Anyway, guys, the point is, is that people like me, we can't just work in our stupid office wagey air-conditioned jobs where we were privileged enough to have a family that could send us to college, or pri 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 privileged enough to have a fucking brain that could do the math and get the scholarships and get the college degrees and the high school diplomas and all that crap, okay? Some of us are just dum-dums who all we can do is just grind, 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 grind. We sit here, we farm the thing, we play the game, we make the money, but automated programs and wages are ruining that for us neat life, no friend having gamers, okay? And then you try to go out to any of these websites and you try to make friends of similar nature, right? If you go to Reddit and you say, I'm looking for a bro culture guild, you know, like a frat style guild full of people that aren't office wages or whatever, and then you just get beat down by the wages, you get beat down by pretty much everybody. Uh, they start advertising their own guilds in your own thread, they just ban you, they just delete your posts. All because they don't- they think that you're toxic, dude, you're so toxic. Trying to find people like-minded to you, that's an echo chamber, bro. Like, no, it's not, it's me trying to find like-minded people to play video games with because I don't mesh well with the office wagey. The office wagey looks down upon the poor man, the, the poor person from the poor country and the person that can't get the good job. They look down on you, like, even other guilds that I've joined that haven't even kicked me out. Alright, right. Like the they, they they see that you don't make as much money as them, and then you're on a different cast. You're on a different level. You're on a, a whole different like platform than them. They look down. They spit on you. They scorn you. They see you as less than human because you either don't have the skills of the luck, or uh, or in a particular part of life where you can make as much money as them. And they don't they don't understand your struggle and your plight of having to work 12 to 16 hours a day in real life. Uh, getting yelled at by literally everyone, the company, the customers, your fellow employees, because they're all drughead, addled alcoholics uh, that are just burying their sorrows in substance abuse. Now, these guys come from white picket fence neighborhoods that are like, have security, and they have like double decker, triple story houses with big fancy lawns and a pupper and a nice loving f family where they all just get whatever the heck they need for very minimal effort. It's insane, like, there's a complete divide in several countries where the white collar worker sits at his computer making the $40 an hour doing literally nothing sipping his expensive $10 uh, like <laughs> coffee drink eating a $17 Jersey Mike sandwich by the way $17 for a sandwich you're insane why would anyone ever pay that stupid heckin price for a sandwich $17 for a sandwich you eat the sandwich you pay $17 
and then you're gonna be hungry in a few hours because it's not even that many calories it's not even hitting any of your macros it's insanely stupid it's really dumb but oh oh it's so good bro it's got like the oil on it dude and you know what other games don't have this problem other games like Halo or a shooting game or a non-MMORPG, you just log in and if you're good at the game, you can style on the wages. The wages don't have the free time to get good at the video game. They have to work. They have to tend to their little white picket fence yards and families, whereas the neat life, no life YouTuber, no job haver, uh, anti-social, no friends haver, can just join a game and just shoot away, have, a, have some good fun. Maybe a bit of banter, and uh, you're not going to get your account muted or silenced for, you know, bantering with another lad. J just, it's a video game. And people in, in the ghetto, they don't play MMORPGs. When I go out and ask, uh, I'm not going to mention names, but when I go out and ask the local dealers, when I go out and ask the local gang members, when I go to the, the retail wagey store and I ask the local employees, I go to the fast food employees and ask them, what video games do they play? None of them have ever, ever in their life told me World of Warcraft. They have never told me any MMORPG, it's always Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, those kinds of games. These people know what kind of games that they uh, can play safely without being uh, beat down, bogged down, and uh, secluded, and uh, you know, being treated unfairly by the wages and by the upper class. Like if I join a Call of Duty Discord, right, or some other shooty game, the worst that I hear are people just hitting bong rips talking about o overdoses or their girl cheating on them or something of the sort. But when I join MMORPG lobbies, all I hear are children crying in the background. These are parents ignoring their children for an MMORPG, right? The office wage is seething about their TPS reports or whatever stupid spreadsheet that they can do in one hour. But oh my god, if they work a full eight hour shift in their eight hour paid allotted time, that's horrible to them, right? I would love for there to be a zombie apocalypse and just like reset this, all, just reset everything, okay? Because the office wagey, who is um, lazy and overweight and, you know, just just a kind of a, you know, wh what do they do, right? In a zombie apocalypse situation, I'll be out there bashing heads and collecting loot and basically in real life Tarkov, right? Whereas the office wagey, they might have like a, some good gear or some good equipment that they paid for with their wagey checks. But, um, <laughs> yeah, they're not going to be able to hold on to it very long. And I know this is a, a non-video game rant that it turned into, but the point is, is that New World has not become fun for the solo player like me because of the bots and because the wages and the Redditors support the bots. It's crazy that we, they would support the bots. I mean, I remember when WoW Classic first came out, uh, there was a guild, and, and they, uh, the guild master didn't want to level his character in WoW Classic. He just paid someone to do it for him because... He was a Bitcoin millionaire, and he had money to blow, and he didn't... He seemed like, it, it, to him, it was it was the investment that his time was worth more than actually playing the game. Like, what in the heck, dude? Like, how are you supposed to bond with your... You're the guild master! How are you supposed to bond with your guild when you just pay someone to play your character for you? It's insane. And then Blizzard didn't even do anything about it, right? And then, like, New World doesn't do anything about the bots. You can add all of these bots to your friend list or block list, and then when they get banned, they disappear, right? Uh, it take... Like, every bot that I have seen, it's, it's taken two weeks... Uh, to a month, and a lot of them, at least 80% of the bots persist. They they don't go anywhere. They th These are clearly, obviously, bots with spam names that don't interact, they don't say anything, they run on rails from tree to tree to node to node, from fishing pond to fishing pond, and why should I play or support a game where they don't support me back, okay? Uh, speaking of support, um, Amazon likes to uh, take third-party, like, uh, ad agencies, to do their kind of spiels, right? So, um, one agency contacted me, their name was Algebra Media. Wow, that's a slap in the face. Anyway, the, <laughs> and they were trying to like, here, here's how the uh, exchange started. Hi, we, we work with Amazon. Do you want to promote a thing that the game's gonna have out in a week? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And they're like, okay, well, you need to sign this NDA. We're not gonna tell you uh, what you'll be promoting or why you'll be promoting it or what we're gonna compensate you for promoting it. I've never been compensated by anybody. I've never taken a sponsorship on this channel. And I was like, can you give me more details? I'm not gonna sign a legal document before I even know what you want me to do or what you want me to cover, okay? That's completely stupid. That's like, oh yeah, just sign over your, your channel, bro. Uh, and then we'll tell you the deets afterwards. Like, no, I ain't doing that. That's stupid. That's really dumb. I'm like, why don't you 
tell me, what is this about? Is it a new weapon? Is it some skins or whatever? It turns out it was that um, Wheel of Time show and um, you could watch streamers on Twitch for like seven hours, dude. Seven heckin' hours, okay, to unlock the dumb clothing items. And I, they never told me. They just ghosted me, basically. And But I but I noticed other, you know, YouTube, more corporate YouTubers, you know the ones. I called it out. The YouTubers that absolutely did not speak about video game data bank getting uh, copyright striked or whatever, right? Uh, those YouTubers that just fell completely silent, they had no opinions, they left no comments, they posted nowhere on any social medias. Those guys are the ones that took the NDA and they're shilling the Wheel of Time drops and oh my god, you know, the, here's the new thing coming out, whoop da ba da ba doo And they're all exact same copy-paste corporate schlick schlock, okay? I'm sick of this crap. YouTube used to be about the people, not these big mega corpos that try to control everything and, and, and control the way you think and what you buy. I get it. That's where the money's at. That's where the advertisers are paying. But the point is, is that YouTubers like me, we have we have we have integrity. Dang it, right? We feel that we need to back each other up. But these corpos, they don't care. Like if you go to any of these big like data mining websites, I'm not gonna name them, but you know, there's a lot of new world websites where you can look up data on items or a map or what have you. They all shield the exact same YouTubers that are in their payroll that are part of the 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 little inner circle click with Amazon right and not the outsiders uh, the outsiders like me and a few others we don't we don't get these algorithm boosts we don't we don't get any upvotes on Reddit as a matter of fact these same corpos try to do everything they can to suppress hide and uh, slow down other com competitors basically getting views so if I, I if, when I had a Reddit account I don't have a Reddit account anymore I don't use Reddit but when I did you know, um, <laughs> basically, uh, anytime I would post, just massive, massive, massive downvotes. Even if I leveraged my fan base for upvotes or what have you, it would still get downvoted, right? And it's not the content, it's not me. It's these corporate schlick schlock, you know, bootlicking whatevers, you know, and then when they post, boom, massive amounts. Even if their video is complete garbage, even if it's a, like, absolute shit show. Uh, non-searchable topic, non-relatable topic, what have you. It, it's just, that's how it is. That's just the world we live in. I want to share with you just real quick a story about Overwatch. Remember Overwatch? Blizzard's first-person shooter game, okay? Whenever that game was still in beta, was still in alpha, every day on every single forum, on every single 4chan thread, on every single Reddit post, Relating to overwatch you would always see someone being shilled and that person was seagull Okay, which was just this team fortress 2 player that no one really cared or heard about but Seagull had lots of money. He was a very privileged lad that came from a nice upbringing a nice picket fits family had plenty of money to spend So what did he do and what did his team quote-unquote do? They spent lots of money on astroturfing, okay? And for those of you that keep up with the Amazon drama, you know that they've been astroturfing the hell out of Reddit, okay? Especially with the uh, think good, do more like whatever grammatical air bull crap that, you know, they try to hide and suppress, right? But back in the Overwatch early days, this seagull guy was consistently astroturfing his ass off so that his name could become the next big name, the next big brand, right? In the Overwatch, you know, metaverse space... Um, you know community right and he succeeded you know he went on to like form or join a pro gamer team whatever sure the dude's good at video games so are most people most people can't afford to actually make it a career and I myself used to be in the MLG back in the Halo 2 days you know believe it or not I it was cringe it was stupid I threw away my childhood for it I don't recommend pro gaming to anyone there's no reason to ever do it if you want to make money playing video games be a youtuber and it's not just like overwatch or amazon or new world being astroturf it's every even albion online has astroturfers there are people that try to um spark discussions and and these algorithm bots are trying to farm karma and all sorts of crap and usually they have like their name is like uh it's like a noun adjective and four numbers and it's pretty easy to spot most of the time uh they're not actual people you know, if you, like, start Googling their Reddit names, if they have an Instagram and a Twitter and all that, sure, they're, they're probably a real person. Or they could be, could have been a former real person that sold their account, right? Sadly, that is just the world that we live in today. Is It's just filled with this stuff. You gotta learn how to filter it. I hope that you guys can see that I'm genuine. I'm independent. I don't take these sponsorships. I always tell these spawn like, I get emailed every day from, like, websites that try to sell gold or people that try to sell cheap audio products or stupid cell phone games. I don't even own a cell phone. I don't own a fucking cell phone, you idiots. 
Stop it. Stop sending me. Hey, do you want to play our new mobile game, bro? Do you want to play our little mobile game, dude? We'll pay you like $100. I'm not going to take 100 effing dollars to play your dumb mobile game. And I don't have a phone. You know what I tell these people? You send me a brand new fancy good expensive phone and you pay me 10 grand and I will shill the hell out of your video game. I will shill the hell out of your uh, out of your phone game. Whatever. That's fine. That's completely doable. And they never do it. They never, ever, ever, ever do it. Now, the thing, uh, if there's other content creators watching, I just want to point out really quickly. Once you bend the knee to these sponsorships and you take a deal for like, say, say you're a YouTuber and they offer you a couple hundred bucks to shill out some lamp monitor uh, or a monitor lamp rather, right? Which is a lamp that you shine on top of your monitor. The dumbest invention ever. A monitor is a source of light. You don't need to put a source of light on your monitor. That's stupid. Okay. I even emailed the people that emailed me that calling the product dumb and like, what the heck is this used for? Why would you shine a light on your monitor? The monitor itself is light. And no response. Of course not, because they probably didn't even understand the email that I sent anyway, assuming they could even speak English. But the point is, is that once you take one of these sponsorships, regardless of what it is, be it a cell phone game, a gold selling site, or anything, what happens is they share your, that is your rate. That is now your pay rate. So they share it with everyone and all these vast media networks and all these vast databases. And they will be like, okay, cool guy, 22 he just sold a spot in his video for $100 for our cell phone game. So now everyone will also want a spot in your videos for $100. They might offer a little bit more, usually less. That is your bargaining power. Because you took it at such a low bid, you can no longer raise that until you become a massively, massively bigger YouTuber. So my advice to you is that if you want to do the sponsorship thing, I understand if you want to make money and stuff like that, right? Uh, money is not super important to me. It is important in the fact that I would love to own a house and land someday. That is like a kind of a, a bucket list thing that I don't think I'll ever be able to, to reach, honestly, because of my lack of brain power and uh, my lack of apathy. I'll, I'll talk about apathy in a bit. But once you take these sponsorships, fellow YouTuber Renos, you are locked in at that price for a very long time, okay? So what you want to do is you want to set a very high price, and then when someone actually takes you up on it, regardless if the video does well or not, doesn't matter, that is now your locked in price, again, until you grow massively larger. And uh, that is something that all these giant, big, famous YouTubers will tell you as well. It's not just me. I have several very large channels that I talk to on a regular basis, very large YouTubers that I hang out with Twitch streamers and so on and so forth that I'm not in their videos, they're not in my videos, but I do talk to them through Discord and, you know, uh, messages and all that kind of stuff, and that they will all tell you the same thing. They will all give you the same advice. Anyway, uh, where were we? Alright, so reasons why uh, New World is still not fun uh, for solo players. Uh, so, you know, gathered to pretty much fill every storage container, right? Uh, either just farming, gathering, and selling, etc. I will almost never reach 200, uh, like, weapon crafting or armor crafting within a reasonable amount of time. Now, the original plan was just to craft slightly better and better perk gear, be it weapons or armor, until I reach 200. But because Amazon changed the whole gear score system, especially in PvP, to make the gear score itself be the scaling factor, and not so much your armor rating or your damage or whatever, uh, completely killed that aspect for people like me. Uh, so what else is there to do for the solo player? While well, you queue out post rush, you get your 500 points in AFK? Yeah, that's something to do. What are we gonna do with the money? What, buy gear upgrades? I guess, sure, why not? Yeah, just farm out post rush and just gather in between the queue so that you can uh, accumulate more money, more gold, and then just buy your upgrades. Oh wait, the wages already do that. They just pay real money. They're never banned for it. They just pay money to the bots or they pay a bot farm to do the farming or they pay a RMT selling gold selling website to get the gold so they don't have to do any in-game actual work like we do. And then they can too can buy the upgrades and then either relist them for 10 times the price or these uh, a lot of the um, governing companies in the game, you know, they're sitting on millions of millions and millions and millions of coins, right? And there's they're all merged into one server now. So there's there's so much money in, in the game now uh, and inflation still has not hit as of this recording. And they are going to be the ones that buy all the good Gucci upgrades, right? You're going to be stuck with 
like mismatched stats and crappy perks on on your 600 gear score legendary gear which you have to buy it at 600 or at least like 599 598 anything above 585 for the stupid uh reddit tier calculations to go into effect to give you even the slightest um e equality in pvp at this point the main reason i ever started a youtube channel was to make friends it was not to make money or make a living or to be famous it was just i just wanted friends to play with I would log in every freaking day with no friends on any games, empty friends list, and I would have no one to play games with, no one to talk to, no one to socialize with, and it just it just became maddening. And I was like, well, maybe if I if I be, grow a YouTube channel and get a following, I will have these friends that will play with me. Yay! And it hasn't happened yet. I'm at what 58,000 subscribers now. Uh, still climbing, thankfully. Uh, a lot of New World channels have been falling lately, sadly. Uh, but, uh, mine's still going good so far, I guess. But, I don't have any friends, man. I don't have a, a tight-knit group of people. Like, I, I look at these Rust YouTubers, and they're like, Oh, I got bullied by this clan, so me and my buddies logged in. And they log in with, like, 40 fucking people. And they just, like, code lock hack into the person's base, or... They just have 40 people just smashing down a wooden door with spears or something. That would be really fun. And I'm not saying I need 40 people to command around to do my dirty work in a video game. I just want lads to enjoy the game with actual based and red-pilled lads that, you know, respect freedom of speech. They respect freedom of expression. Uh, they respect the fact that video games are meant to, to make memories, not chase virtual goods, not... To satiate your virtual greed. Video games do not exist to be some try-hard win-loss dude. They don't exist so that you can boast about your kill-death ratio. No one cares about that in like one, two weeks from now, one year from now, ten years from now. Do any of you guys in the comments that have made it this far in the video, do any of you guys care at all that I used to be a Halo Pro gamer in the top 0.02%? That my rank was so high in Halo 2 that all I got matched with was modders and hackers on console back in the day. No, no one cares. No one gives a shit. No one ab no one cares. No one's like, oh wow, that's so Benji. He's so good at the game. Oh my god. Like the only people that, that may respect being a pro gamer is like children, okay? If you're like 13 or 14 and you see like uh, some really good gamer that's like a high rank in StarCraft or Counter-Strike, and you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's him, it's that pro gamer guy, oh my god. No, 10 years from now, no one, get, no one cares. Like, look at Gross Score, for example. He was, like, what, the world's best uh, Twisted Fate player? Look at him! No one cares! No one gives a shit! <laughs> the, the point is, though, is that you know what people do care about? They care about memories. Be it good or bad memories, okay? And New World, the point I'm getting at, it's a very hard game to create memories. There's not a lot for you to do to alter the, the standard stuff. Everyone logs in, they grind out their gypsum orbs every day, they, they do their daily stuff, they do their crafting, and then they do their dungeons. And that's all you do. The world PvP, if, if you beat someone up over a resource, they just go turn PvP off where they come back with 10 people and cream you, okay? It's not interesting, it's not fun, it's not funny. You may think the territory wars, guess what? Every major server is being controlled by a conglomerate of people that all agreed to handshake and handhold each other in Discord, just like what happened in Albion Online, okay? The server I'm on, the, it's two brothers, okay? There's a brother on Covenant and a brother on the green team. And they are real life brothers. And they have a lot of friends and a lot of power. And they just win trade. They're just like, okay, this week you can have this territory. Okay, this week I'm taking it back. Uh huh. Woohoo. You know, and the same thing happened on my dead server. The the Fallout Guild of remaining Enclave members that weren't even originally Enclave. It's just people from my channel and just people that they picked up in the in the server itself. You know what they did? They're like, you know what, we don't want to own the whole map. We don't want to have a good advantage and have higher gathering rates. We don't want to kill the server, even though the server was already dead. The server was already happening and dead. You know, what they did was they just gave away territory to people they didn't like, they didn't respect them, they, th they just mass reported them every day. They tried to be nice and they were they never got that kindness returned, okay? Uh, and it's it's not a fun memory to have that you bend the knee and become the, the land cuck and give your shit in the game to someone else because you want their e-respect. Are you kidding me? You should have been dogging them every day, taking their territory and just killing them off of the server. Like, what are you doing? 
Uh, the point is, you, you gotta make memories in these games, okay? Like, take a take a really boring, like, like grindy game, for instance, and say someone is having an in-game funeral. I know a lot of people are against bombing an in-game video game funeral, okay? Because in real life, if you showed up to someone's funeral and you started beating people up and smashing the place in, you would be not only breaking the law, you would be going to jail, you're disrespecting the dead. Whereas in the video game, that is how you preserve someone's memory. If I die, guys, I'm telling you right now, if I die and someone hosts a swole benchy funeral, I want it to be griefed. I want people to come in there and kill everyone hosting the funeral. I want them to blow up whatever in-game statue they erect of me. I want, I, I just, I want it to be torn to pieces. And you know, you know why? Not only is it funny, not only is it an engaging in-game event, but it will be remembered. People still remember that funeral that got bombed in Planetside. People still remember the funeral that got bombed in World of Warcraft Classic, okay? Uh, and when you think of, think about it, like, think if there's an afterlife, right, where you just have, um, you know, you basically have world, like, you, you have creative mode from Minecraft, right? So you're flying around, and you can look at the replay of your life, or you can watch the world from your little orb, right? You know, men be st studying their orbs, that meme. That, that, I think that meme's already dead. But the point is, is that if you're looking from the afterlife at life, and someone bombed your funeral in a game, you'd be like, haha, that's pretty funny, dude. That is a pretty cool. Uh, I, that, that's gonna be remembered, and then, like, years from now, you, you browse the internet of the living, right? Not the dead, of course, not the dead internet. And you see news articles being written about it. Oh, Swole Benji's funeral got bombed. He was a YouTuber. Kind of cringe, but, um, people felt that, um, they needed to blow up his funeral. And I would, I would be overjoyed. I'd be like, yes, they still remember. They, you know, it's the fun memories in video games. I'm not saying go bomb funerals. If you want. If it's funny, okay? Like, you don't have to be distasteful about it. You can just... Turn on PvP and PvP in a PvP zone. That's basically what happened. People were playing the game. You can't get mad at people for playing the game, okay? Uh, anyway, you gotta create memory. Like, I have so many good memories of a game called Gmod. Gmod is not an MMORPG. Gmod is not anything. It's just a stupid little sandbox full of people that take games overly serious. And what would I do with Gmod? I would join a server, like a roleplay server, and I would immediately try to get the job of the police officer. Because the police officer can tase people lock them in jail and generally have authority over the server. And what would I do? I would find someone just on a rooftop minding their own business and then I would tase them to the ground while they screamed at me over the microphone to stop or that they're calling an admin. Okay? And then I would continue to tase them, eventually jail them, and I would maybe get some people to come in with me um, and do the same thing and eventually we would have the entire server jailed and we would be beating and shooting them in their jail cells, talking crap, tasing them until the admin came in, cleaned it all up, and banned us. And I'm telling you right now, that's hilarious. That's funny. If you wanted to play a game like that for real, what you do is you go, you get a crummy little wagey job inside the game, and then you grind away with other people, slowly building up your money, building a little home with little decorations, until the cops come in and arrest you and take all your stuff for being a gun salesman or whatever the heck, or the server resets, or you get bored and play something else, okay? You just do that every every single day, you do the same little routine, and what do you have to show for it 10 years from now? 10 years from now... Oh, I played Gmod, and I, I sold guns as a gun dealer in Gmod. Wow, I was so cool. Everyone liked me. I sold guns to people. Wow. Um, no, that's boring. Uh, I joined a Gmod server, and we bullied the admin. We uh, we, we would call out into the voice, uh, the voice comms, Sniper team at the ready. And when the uh, Gmod admin would um, admin sit someone on a roof, we would all follow him and then shoot the admin who forgot to turn on god mode, so the admin would die, and he'd have to fly back over to the roof, at which point we rescued the guy being stuck in a cage, in a little admin cage. You know, we would uh, mass arrest the server and talk crap over the voice, and it was a lot of fun. And it was a lot, very enjoyable, very memorable. Like, uh, there was a game called Reign of Kings, and uh, the funny thing in that game is admins could set their character where they could not be killed, so they would fly around and, you know, gripe at you over voice that you're breaking server rules. But one thing and hard-coded into the game of Reign of Kings is that you could grab a rope and you could grab someone with the rope and then yoink them around the game world. So if we saw an admin who was floating around telling people to stop griefing or whatever, we would just rope them. So we'd get the rope and we would attack the admin with it, which would then throw the admin on the ground, completely helpless, and we would drag them around the land. And then if we if someone had built a, a, a noose like area we would we would hang the admin and we'd be like hang on boys and then the admin would be like str like his character would be dying because 
even the god mode didn't protect you from being hung in that game. And we'd be like, oh, he's begging. Oh, he's struggling. And it was just a fun, funny, epic memory, right? Like, that game, like, does anyone really care? Like, does anyone that played Reign of Kings have memories like, oh, yeah, I farmed for days to build me a little mini castle, and then I farmed up and got the best armor and the best poleaxe in the game, and then I went out and I fought in some wars, and I killed some players and got their loot, and at one point, this guy I knew became the king of the server. It was really cool. Like... No one, no one cares. No, no one, no one honestly really cares that you did good in a video game, okay? What they care about is the people that have taken the red pill, they have woken up from the matrix, and they are playing the game that the developers haven't put you, like, you're not, you're not on rails, okay? When you play a video game, most people, 99.9% .9 of you guys, are on rails. You log into the game, you get upset if something happens that aren't on the rails. Like, I have so many hated comments right now on my channel saying that I just taught people how to AFK an outpost rush. You get 500 points, you get your rewards, you don't even need to play anymore, okay? That is not my problem, that is not the player's problem, that... That is the game's problem. If the game thinks that's a problem, then the, it's it's up to the game to fix it. It's not up to us. It's not up to you to try to police how we play, okay? The point is, is that uh, Outpost Rush is not fun, and um, if anything, uh, I would do something fun. If I could find a funny, memorable thing to do in Outpost Rush, I would be making videos on it, okay? There is nothing that I can really come up with in New World that I can do creatively uh, that is outside of the matrix, outside of the train rails, uh, to make the the situation different, exciting, or memorable on any server, game mode, game type, whatever. Okay, yeah, sure, there's people, like, you go to Merc Guard and you, like, shoot the, 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 the Thorpe monsters into a group of people and they don't have a tank and that some of them get downed. Um, that's pretty much part of the course because people do that to themselves anyway. You don't really need to do that. Uh, maybe you turn on PvP and you shoot at people trying to solo chest runs or something, right? I, there, there's not there's not a lot of back and forth to that. I don't think that's very memorable. Like, I'm not going to be sitting in the old folks metaverse, you know, room if I even live to be old and be like, Yeah, back in my day when I played New World, man, I was one of those guys that killed you in the Merc Guard runs. Yes, I was. I don't know why uh, my accent changes when I get old, but uh, regardless, the point is is that there's not a real good way to make memories or funny epic moments in this game. Okay, so sure, when uh, when Enclave was playing, we would have 200 people running around PvP flag, and anyone trying to push territories would just get shit on. They would just get absolutely dominated, okay? And you know what they would do? Uh, they would just sit in town and not fight back, or they would give up and let us push the territory, and then on Heliopolis, they would use their, uh, you know, max gear score players to just hold the territory indefinitely, because it's an instance 50v50, and we hadn't figured out the game yet, and so on and so forth, and, and basically, it was just staggered so they could hold the land as long as possible, but that, you know, killed the server, whatever, so that, that's a memory, they, they kind of did it, the, the green guys. Uh, from that big, one big YouTube channel, they, they kind of did that, right? Uh, that's a memory that they can cherish forever. So I'm sitting in the old folks' home with Upper Echelon, and he's like, Yeah, man, back in my day, man, we took over the server, dude, and we, we crushed them all, man. We used our little ice gauntlets, man. Yeah, it was good times, bro, brother. Right? And, uh... <laughs> So, so they, they found a way to create a memory in the game, and, but the thing is, is that's not something I can do as a solo player, and because Enclave quit, and I can't find like-minded individuals like Enclave to play with, uh, I'm pretty much stuck not able to make any of the sort. For those that have watched my channel for a very long time, you'll, you remember the turning point in World of Warcraft, right? Where I was messing with bots, I was luring bots around, I was killing the bracket stacking bots, um, upsetting the entire server, I would uh, gank lobbies in low level zones, that, that's the main reason I wanted to play New World. It wasn't to like, do dungeons. I would love to have a group to do dungeons with on the regular and just, you know, shoot the shit uh, in voice chat and just hang out and have a good time, right? But I don't have that because I don't fit in with these office waging normies that I've talked about earlier in the video. If you've been skipping around, shame on you. Go back and rewatch that part. But the point is, is that I don't have a way to create epic memories or moments in this game. It's basically, um, I'm just on, on rails doing the same thing everyone else is doing. Uh, just spinning the wheels of the, you know, like a little rat cage, how they have that hamster wheel. Yeah, I'm just spinning the wheels, man. I don't know what to do in this game to create a funny moment. 
No one voices up. I can run around town and be like, hear ye, hear ye, woohoo, or playing a soundboard of like, guys, I need your help, they got me pinned here, you know, and stuff, and no one responds, no one talks in voice because they're all in Discord with their own little cliques, their own little groups, and I know at some point in this video I muted the guy, the 70-year-old the boomer that was in my group, um, because I didn't want him talking over the video. That's why I did that. That is not something I normally ever do, but, uh, because I wanted this video footage itself to be a pure, uh, Genesis run. This is the first time I've ever been in Genesis, by the way, guys, so I don't care if you talk crap about my performance. I'm literally in light armor, uh, so I die in one hit to the bosses. I don't really care. I'm paying for the run, paying for the carry, just so you guys can see it, just so I can notch it off the list and be like, yep, I've done every dungeon in the game. Time to quit. And I'm not saying that I'm quitting, um, but I, like I said, I, I don't have any way to create an epic, memorable moment in this game. Uh, I've been I've been trying so hard. There's nothing I can creatively do to either alter people's, um, you know, like or hate for the game. There, there's real, there's nothing I can do. I don't know what to do, guys. So let's recap now because uh, gathering is pretty much dead for me because I have all my storages full and I can't sell due to lack of uh, inflation. Or I could sell and then just buy the bottom feeding scraps that I'll never be able to afford because all the big governments will always be able to buy the Gucci stuff, right? Or I can play another, what, uh, 5,000 hours by my calculations to max out all my stuff, get all the trophies, get all the, the housing things. And hopefully by then, you know, not get banned for having fart in a name or for upsetting someone in a ticket or assuming the game doesn't just straight up die by then, right? Because, I mean, last I... Here's the thing. It's the holidays. No one's at work. No one's at school, the game just had a massive update, and it, it's capping at 80,000 80, players. 80,000 players for an MMORPG, that's pretty bad. That's that's age of, no, um, I'm sorry, Albion Online levels of uh, low player counts, right? And Albion Online is like 30 to 40% bots, AFKers, and multi-accounters. So, um, how, many, how many of those 80,000 people in New World are bots? Uh, I'm gonna say at least 10% or like 10,000. Let's go with 10,000, okay? Um, which would be like what 15% some, some, something like that. It's crazy. A lot of people are unaware uh, I know I just ranted about bots earlier, but people aren't even aware there are people that multi box 40 bots and they join out post rush against themselves and they win the match incredibly fast and they it's seven they make 700,000 coins a day completely automatic Okay, the other bots, the other bots out there that run bot farms that do gathering, they just chop trees and mine ore. Those guys make 100,000 a day off their bot farm. I'm not saying one bot makes that. One bot absolutely cannot harvest or farm enough resources to make 100k a day. Okay, it's not possible. But when they have 40 bots all doing these tasks, all by, all from one guy, just like one guy doing it, right? Uh, they, yeah, they make that amount. It's crazy, okay? Um, I... I still know people in the in the RMT industry, okay? So back in the day, I was a professional gamer. Um, uh, I, did, I did join a Counter-Strike team. We got to Cal I before I got kicked out, and I, I can talk about that. And I think I've already talked about that in some videos. But basically, um, in, in some tournament final or whatever, uh, one of the members was kind of being a dick to me, and he shot me in the foot in the game trying to, like, show his power over me. And I, I was the runt of the group. I was the youngster. They were all older than me. And so I just full autoed his head off with an AK in Counter Strike, of course, and uh, it, it causes us to lose, of course. And I, you know, I, I never forgive. I, I hold grudges indefinitely forever. Okay, and uh, yeah, I get kicked out eventually for it. But some of the team members who weren't so bad, you know, kept up with me, and we kept in touch. And they started RMT companies for World of Warcraft. This is way back in the day. And some of these people are still in the RMT business, and they make. They make lots of in-game currency, let's just say that. They make a lot of in-game currency with these bots and these programs, and Amazon doesn't ban them. And another, and just another, I've already griped in another video about this, but remember when people were account sharing and doing family sharing so that they could have multiple accounts in New World? Amazon gave everyone that did that on every single family shared account the game. They just, they, they saw that people family shared the account, used it for nefarious reasons, and they're like, you know what, we, we don't have family sharing anymore, but we're going to give you a copy of the game for every family shared account you had. So all of the botters, all of the exploiters, all of the gold spammers, all of the RMTers, all, everybody that are bad for the game all got free copies of the game. I'm a YouTuber with a huge audience that reaches 800,000 to 3 million viewers a month. Where are my free copies to give out to people? If I, if I had free copies of the game... 
to just gift people in my Discord or anything, that would that would be positive for the game. But they don't they don't give us anything to give out. If you're a Twitch streamer, oh, you can you can watch someone's Twitch, right? Uh, they had this um, uh, Wheel of Time like cosmetics, right? Recently, and uh, if you watch a Twitch streamer one hour at a time. For seven or eight hours, you unlock all the little things. So what you do is you go to Twitch, you click on New World, you click on someone that says they have drops enabled in their title, you mute the stream, and then you check back every hour and refresh your Twitch page, and then you click claim on your cosmetic. It's cancerous. It's it's exploitative, and I get it. It's an Amazon game, and Twitch is Amazon. I understand that, but it's so scummy because these people, they, they, they click browse, and they see that one of the top played games, it, it didn't even reach the top. It, it was like in, like, like maybe like 12th or 13th place even with this program running right that's how much the game has died um uh, it had like 30 to 40 thousand viewers at peak hours uh which is pretty bad but anyway guys um the point is is that it is it's it's terrible right because um these streamers that only get like normally 500 to 1,000 viewers are getting like 10 to 14 thousand so good on them let them profit that's cool for them but uh it, it is kind of deceptive because if you're just a normie browsing Twitch for the new latest game to play, because that's something I do. I, I like to see what games are popular and see if it's something that I would like to play. So I, I, I will go to YouTube and Twitch and so on and so forth and see what what is the most played game, you know, on the list. And uh, maybe I'll play it, maybe I won't. It really depends. But the point is, is that they inflated the viewer accounts for New World with these little item skins, and it's very deceptive, and it's not fair, and uh, it, it's scummy. It's really scummy. So how am I supposed to continue playing New World and making New World content, right? I've covered basically everything a solo player can cover, okay? Sure, I can make little dungeon guides like, here's how to tank the depths. Here's how to tank Dynasty Shipyard, bro. So when you get to the boss, just taunt them and then run around and block. <laughs> like, the game is extremely overly simplified compared to, like, World of even World of Warcraft Classic, man. Like, it's really, really simple. And, um, like, Lazarus is a breeze. It's simple. Um, the sad thing is a lot of these groups, a lot of these people, they don't tell you the boss mechanics. Even in this footage, right? They explained, they tried to explain the mechanics over text chat. And they failed to mention a lot of key things. Like, they say, um, oh, when when you get shot by a green laser, I don't even know if the footage is on the boss yet. I'm just assuming uh, that I'm at the last boss of the footage. But they're like, okay, so this boss, it shoots a green laser beam. All you got to do is run to the wall, okay? Uh, they don't say why you run to the wall. Does running to the wall stop the, the, the laser beam from dealing damage? So what ended up happening is the laser beam, once it's done channeling onto you, it puts out a big circular green pool of damage over time, Basically, like, the, the ground is on fire, right? It's very hard to see, um, especially for colorblind people. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, these guys didn't really explain that mechanic. They just said, when you get lasered, run to the wall, okay? So I did that, and then they didn't tell me, oh, yeah, uh, it also puts a pool of poison under you, so step out of that. Um, which I figured out eventually. Um, they also didn't say that this mechanic happens during, like, there's a mechanic where rocks drop from the ceiling and you gotta hide behind it. When it's channeling its big AoE spell, they didn't mention that there's a channel um, or any of that stuff, or the fact that you can be green lasered while hiding behind the rock, which will then make the rock um, dangerous to hide behind because there's a poison pool of death behind it, right? Um, so, uh, so yes, while I could make a video explaining these mechanics now that I have experienced them, is it something I really want to utilize or remember? A lot of the reason I make YouTube videos for games is because I want to play them 10 years from now. So what I mean by that is that, like, say World of Warcraft, right? What if back in the original vanilla World of Warcraft days, which I was actually a YouTuber at that time, but if I made guide videos for myself, for my future self to use, I would have so much more power, right? Which is why I made the videos that I made for World of Warcraft. It's why I made the videos that I made for Albion. All the videos that I make on my channel are for me to enjoy in the future, or to scrapbook myself in case I suddenly die from illness or an accident, okay? That's pretty much it. So if I make a video on how to tank, uh, what, what, what is this instance called? Genesis? See, I've already forgotten. It's that boring. It's that generic. If I make a video on how to tank Genesis, maybe years from now, in the future, uh, there will be a version of me that has completely forgotten the game, or maybe there's a classic re-release, or maybe someone pirates the server, uh, you know, whatever the heck, and people are playing it again, and it's kind of popular, but hopefully there's better, newer, funner games in the future. Who knows how bleak and, 
Uh, who knows if there even is a future, right? For all I know, we could just live in the pods, eat the bugs, etc., etc. Now, I've also noticed that my videos, the best performing videos on my channel, are the ones that I funneled a lot of anger and hatred into, to uh, which is a form of passion, by the way, to create. So, for instance, um, uh, the World of Warcraft, the, the best video on my channel is like 700,000 views. It's the World of Warcraft Grinding, grinding Guide, right? And I know you may look at that and be like, well, there's, that's not hateful, that's not anger-filled, and no. The, re the reason that was created is because when I started looking up leveling paths and leveling guides for World of Warcraft, I found nothing but questing guides, questing routes, questing, 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 blah, blah, blah. I hate questing. I hate questing so darn much. I It makes me seethe. It makes me fume. I don't want to do a quest. I don't want to be a wagey in a video game. I don't want to have to deliver packages. I don't want to have to get a job killing tin boars and harvesting their hearts and give it to some NPC schmuck so that he can profit off those hearts from my hard work. And what do I get? A little bit of chunk change and some experience. Wow, experience, dude. So when I say my best videos are hate-fueled or hate-filled, uh, anger induced. That's what I mean. I made the grinding guide video because I hate questing. I hate questing so much that I made a counter guide to all of the quest guides because there wasn't really a grinding guide out there, right? Um, so I set out, I did my research, I did my testing, I did my info, uh, I did all the, all the hard work to get the best possible grinding guide I could get. And then I put it out there, despite all the questing guides, I'm spitting those questing guides faces, and especially since uh, a lot of the questing guides out there actually went pay to view uh, before Classic Launch was just really, really scummy. You know, you know the ones. I'm not going to name the names, but um, it's videos like that that um, have a lot of passion in them. And in 2022, I want to put more of that passion into my videos. I would like to create videos um, to go against the things that I don't, like, a, a lot of Albion vids, like, uh, the fastest possible, like, path for new players, that's a popular one that a lot of people enjoy. The reason I made that one is because I would go to Reddit, and I would go to other little guides' websites, and they all said to use Great Axe, they all said to do tier red zones and black zone stuff, and at the time, it's like, you know, after thorough testing on the test realm and doing a lot of math and spreadsheeting, I found out that was all false information, all completely false. That is not the best way to level. That is not the best way to, to fame up your character. That is not the best way to get money. Sure, if you hit a jackpot, it's it's a good source of money. Yeah, sure, I'm not going to argue with that. But there were way more efficient, way more better ways to do things. So I made a guide to spite all of those guides that I feel like were false information, but at the same time, they, you know, ran campaigns against me saying that I'm false information, but it's not. Uh, you run the numbers, you run the math, you do the testing, you won't find anything better, and if you do, I would gladly tell you that your guide is better and faster and more efficient, but it's not, it's not, it's mathematically not. You, like, unless they introduce new weapons or nerf or buff weapons over time, sure. Like, currently in Albion Online, the best way for fame and money is just to kill mobs in the, in the outside world. You go to the the black zone like a tier 5 tier 6 whatever and you kill all the rare mobs you kill the elite mobs and that's basically the game it's six times more efficient than any guide that i had put out before that patch hit but before that patch that was the most efficient way to play that game and so i made these videos because i was so bad that i specced up great axe to 100 i followed the reddit guides i followed the little youtubers that are in arch that want to sell more great axes guides you know you know the ones and uh, it, it was just like, no, this is not the way. I can't believe I've been misled in such a way. So I, I actually didn't mean to rhyme there, by the way, guys. I always accidentally rhyme. What's up with that? Why am I not a rapper? Um, oh, yeah, because I made a rap video for Albion and it bombed. Uh, yeah, so all of you little twerps out there telling me, you need to you need to edit your videos more, bro. You need to edit your videos. You need to put more work in your videos. I love that, right? Um, the highly edited, highly planned, highly scripted videos all bomb. They all bomb, okay? On my channel, there is a World of Warcraft video that talks about the Lunar Festival. That is the, the one video on this channel that I have worked on more than any any other video. That took an incredibly long time to make script and film, uh, especially on my old computer, by the way. And it, it's it's like one of the, the lowest performing WoW videos I've ever put out. It's, it's a masterpiece in my mind, but it is absolute unsearchable, unwatchable garbage to everyone else. Anyway, let's get back to New World stuff, okay? So, as a solo player, what am I supposed to do in New World? Continue gathering? Uh, like, like, but at this point, like, I don't have friends to play with. I can't find friends to play with. 
Uh, there is no subreddit, there is no Steam forum post, there is no Discord that I can find of like-minded people. So my only option is to play something else at this point, okay? Unless Amazon does something for us solo players giving us uh, some sort of advantage, which they won't. I don't... Like, they're trying to kill their own game. It's pretty obvious at this point, okay? You ban people for having fart in their name. You perma ban them for having fart in their name. So, so stupid. It's so dumb. The point... Guys... Uh, what am I supposed to make? What what videos do you want to see? Uh, I want to see I want to see how you can uh, farm Ebbage scale elite mobs. I want to see a solo chest run You open you open the map you go to the, those little map websites you open the map you toggle on chests And then you run to them and then you pick a tanky build with a stun and you stun the enemy near the chest and you loot the chest or you you take the mob and then you run away a bit and use a high mobility build when you root the mob and you run back to the chest and you loot it. That is not a fun video. That is not an in, that is not something that I want to remember or care about or something that I would do ten years from now. Like like say ten years from now I've completely forgotten New World. I don't know how to play it anymore. All the videos on my channel I can rewatch and I can get my power level back. I wish that I had done more of these like guide things growing up. Like Age of Empires 2. I used to be an insanely high ranked player and I had these cool builds like the Saracen Monk Rush. I had um, some of the fastest castles anyone had ever seen at the time on the MSN Gaming Zone. And I, I, I can't find any of my old guides. I, I had text guides. I would write it all out into text and publish it on these guide websites or news websites or websites. That, like back in the day, you didn't have like YouTube and, and mega sites like Facebook and stuff. You had like an Age of Empires 2 fans.com site or something, right? And um, you would have to go there for all of your Age of Empires information, essentially. Yeah, they had like game facts and stuff like that, but it wasn't quite as, as the same. The point is, is that I don't, I don't have these guides. Um, so when I revisit Age of Empires 2, I am basically at a power level of zero. I am a complete newbie, and the people that have been playing it nonstop for 20 years who have never stopped playing it will absolutely demolish me, and I have no absolute way to gain that power back unless I start from the very beginning and relearn all of that stuff and relearn all that, you know, the muscle memory all over again. So I make the videos on my channel so that I can skip that grind, that regrind, you know, because I guess level you level down in real life if you don't do something for a while. I can watch the videos and I can get back to where I was at a much quicker pace. Okay, like it's been what like one or two years since I've played WoW. Um, if I were to log on to my rogue today, which is locked into that permanent classic realm, I wouldn't be at the same power level that I was two years ago. Uh, I'd be a little rusty, but you know what? I could, I could, I could open one of those videos. I could see what hotkeys I had set and where I had my skills set to which hotkeys, uh, which add-ons that I used, and so on and so forth. Watch a few videos, spend a couple hours listening to myself, uh, very fun times, and then I would be back to where I was. And then all I'd have to do is do some warm-ups in the game, and I would be completely back to where I was in in just a few hours. I wouldn't have to like replay the game over and over and over again and figure out, oh, oh yeah, I had Sinister Strike on my V key. That feels really comfy. Yeah, there you go, right? Uh, so these videos, videos like this, it's to remind me of, of, of things. It's, it's to kind of be like a historical person for New World. Like I put out a video the other day that shows a speed glitch. The speed glitch allowed you to run super heckin' fast in the game. And I documented that for historical reasons, okay? So that I can look back 10 years from now and be like, I remember New World and I remember people running at 10 million miles an hour. That was funny. That was a fun and rememberable time. I have over a thousand hours into this game. If you count the betas, it's almost a thousand five hundred or so. I don't really have anything else I can honestly talk about in this game. I thought about making a video about where all the floating presents are because I have that information, but because I play on such a high pop server, there are bots now that farm the presents. I'm not even kidding, okay? They farm the presents. Maybe I can make a video about how you should spend your tokens on the food because the food is a 33 stat food for basically free that you will only be able to get until the 11th, and uh, after that, they're gone. But see, that's a time-gated video, whereas after Christmas, essentially, uh, the video is dead weight and completely pointless. And who knows if they'll even bring that mechanic back next Christmas? Who even knows that the game will exist next Christmas? The servers could be shut down. I don't know. But um, 
I pretty much uh, made videos on how to farm just about everything or why you shouldn't shouldn't. Remember, I made a video about elite chest farming or chest farming in general, saying it was a complete waste of time. There's a lot of comments saying, no, it's not a wasted time. I got, I got uh, this legendary drop that showed for 30k. It's not a waste of time. Bro, the time that I spent farming those chests, I could have made way more than 30k skinning rawhide over and over and over again. So that argument is mute, okay? Um, let's see, uh, bosses, elite bosses, I made videos on where to find those and how to farm the gear score on those, which has already been nerfed, there's no point. People even got banned for that, can you believe that? People got banned for farming boss mobs. What a stupid fucking thing to ban people for, okay? What about Azoth water? I haven't made a, a, a farm on how to farm Azoth water yet. Guess what, you open a map program and then you follow a path where all the Azoth water spawns. Guess what, I'm on a high pop server now where there's no Azoth water spawns anymore because the bots snatch them all up. Um, Hemp spawns, I've covered hemp, silkweed, fungus herbs, and wire fiber. I've covered barley. Um, I haven't made a video dedicated to blueberries or, or anything. I've made a video dedicated to broccoli, carrots, milk, potatoes. Um, you can't harvest pumpkins, you know, like uh, uh, I've done iron routes, oil routes, silver routes, platinum and gold, or calcum. Lodestone was the most recent one. You know what? You know what these videos do? They get no traction because no one cares. I made a video showing the best lodestone and honey spot in the entire game, and the video completely bombed because people don't care because people just go open a map program and get that information. They don't want to watch a video on it. Um, I made, I still make those videos though, and you don't want to know why, is because in the future 10 years from now, these map websites may not exist. They just might go away, like ThoughtBot did, and parts of Wowhead, and stuff like that, right? They will be gone, but I will have it eternally, like, like, in video form for anyone to use in the future, assuming the game exists in the future, or, or whatever, right? Or maybe I, I get, I sick-eyed into my past, and I somehow get to keep, like, my superpower is that I keep all my YouTube videos somehow in my brain or something. And that will allow me to have a huge advantage in video games and change the world. I don't know. It's an anime that, you know, might or might not be made. You know what would be a cool anime idea? I'm running out of time here. Uh, is all these animes, it's just like some normal Japanese guy that has a crappy life and he dies. And then he goes into this magical, powerful wizard land where he's a wizard or he's a he's like a powerful dude, right? How about the opposite? You take the powerful wizard, you take the powerful lich king or whatever from a fantasy world, he dies, and then he gets isekai'd into a normal life. He gets to go to school and be a wagey and play the video games, and is there an anime where, where the tables have turned on the isekai like, like whole thing, you know? Instead of being reborn into a little girl that grows up to rule Germany, how about um, the magical girl becomes a dude in a normal like 21st century setting and he just plays video games and hates like working at a grocery store or something, huh? What about that? What about something like that, okay? Um, I've covered all the skinning animals, alligators, bisons, the cow spawn, pigs, lions, sheep, wolves, bears. I don't know what else to cover. I've covered um, moat farming, essences, stuff like that. I've covered pigment farming on this channel. I've covered uh, certain NPCs that drop certain named drops. And I've also covered if you were to start over on a new server, you can kill this guy at level 30 and get a really good frost gauntlet that's good until level 45. And then you kill this guy. I've done all that kind of stuff, right? Um, I, I've covered PvP, that, that's another topic that was, uh, very hated on my channel, was zerging PvP, PvP events, wars, expedition stuff, invasions. I haven't made an invasion guide because it's pretty self-explanatory and obvious what you need to do in invasions, but, um, I don't really see, I don't, not a lot of people get to do invasions, it's all inner circle people and people in guilds and with friends that get to do that stuff, so I wouldn't even be able to get footage for that now anyway. Uh, there's there's like nothing left for me. To, I don't know what to cover guys. I'm gonna have to pick up another game uh, Subscribers have mostly stagnated and this game uh, like I log in and I will shit post in chat Admittedly, I will shit post in chat try to bait people into saying things and uh, getting mad and getting upset uh, Any way that I can because I think that's fun and memorable But it's not video worthy because this typing in text chat all day is not something people want to watch uh, unless I did a lot of heavy editing with music and funny meme noises, okay? It's not happening here on this channel. All right, this video is about over, and I have been talking completely straight the entire time without stopping for over an hour, and it is destroying my voice. 
But uh, I just want to say thank you for watching the entire video. For those that skipped around, uh, go back and rewatch it. You uh, you hurt video. You hurt YouTubers by doing that. By the way, some people have been complaining that I don't sound good or I don't sound positive. Smile for me, Wagey. Uh, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to wait my table, you waitress, waiter. If you're not smiling when you give me your food, then you need to find another job. Find something else to do. No, guy. That's not how. That's not how the world works. Okay. Jobs suck. People don't want to work, and um, they're only kidding themselves. They're only smiling at you so they don't get fired you realize that right you realize that the wagey in the KG is smiling because if he doesn't then he will lose his job and he will lose his pay and he will not be able to buy his tasty tendies if I sound disgruntled in my video it's probably because I haven't eaten in a few days gee I wonder why maybe because YouTube isn't doing so well or maybe new world is doing so well anyway guys I'm so bitchy thanks for watching as always be a bro and stay swole and yada 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 new video I try to make a video every day but probably not because I'm running out of content to make anyway I will see you in the next video. Take care, lads. Mwah!